All right, now we're ready to replace, uh, make some replacement columns for our sessions that was missing one. And where we start actually is the hardware store. We take our missing column and we see that approximate color that it is. So we go and we find some paint swatches that come close to matching the base color. Usually these are two colors. We find one that's close to matching the base and we find one that is close to matching the marbleized portion, printed portion here. So this takes a good eye Sometimes I get the people at the hardware store to help me. And what you want to do is buy a paint sample. Now here I have my base color and these are both Benjamin Moore paints. You want to stir those up really well. And here's my base color. Now, I find an appropriate dowel. This one is about the right length for my six columns, and it um, you want to sand it smooth. It's a pop. This is a poplar dowel. You can get these online. I find that usually a five eighths works pretty well uh, for these uh, to get the get the right size. But you can you can get different sizes. You can get creative. You can take a round dial and, and cut it in half. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, after I sand this and get it smooth, I'm going to lay down a base coat on it with my base coat that I got from the store. Now these samples shouldn't cost very much. These would be one or two or three dollars probably. And this will do a, this actually the sample will do a lot of columns. Now I've put a hook in the end, uh, a regular picture hook, so that I can hang this up. So I'm just going to lay down my base coat on my column. And I'm using a foam brush here. And you want to get a nice good even base coat. Again, we've got down plastic because this is a messy procedure. We'll go ahead and lay this down. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hang this up by its hook and let it dry. And I normally let everything dry overnight. Uh, you don't have to with fast drying materials. Um, this has a little crack at the end, but that don't won't matter because we can cut it off. Now. <clears throat> Here's another good reason to have that hook. You can do the whole whole length and then just hang it right up. Now we can see that our column is dried nicely and it's looking pretty good, nice and smooth and it's got a fairly good match there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and put the next coat on which is the marbleizing coat. Make sure it's... Now I've got a chip brush that I've cut notches in. And the reason I've cut notches in is so I can miss some places and it'll go on and, and look look like a marbleized effect. This this takes some practice and but the technique is not really difficult. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to put a little bit of the marbleizing coat on and we're going to paint it up and down going in opposite directions. So we get kind of a 
marbleized look covering it up here. Just go ahead and you don't want to go in the same direction or it will not it will not look natural. And you don't want to get really too much on or you won't come up with with a good uh, marbleized coat. So you can see we're starting to look like like a black mantle column. Now, well, this before this is dry, we're going to take a makeup brush, like you buy, and you can buy this at Dollar General or somewhere, and or the Dollar Tree, so you don't need to be too expensive. We're going to dip it in a little water, and we're going to put it on our finish. And what this does is it makes it makes it run together and look like a natural marbleized surface. It just smooths everything out. Remember not to go in the same direction all the time, going in different directions, cross hatching a little bit now that we've softened the, the top coat, and looking to achieve a nice natural finish similar to what was on the original cloth. Now sometimes the hairs come out and you have to get the hairs out of there, and there we have it. We have done our piece and it looks like it will you want to get the fine lines in going in different directions and you'll get a nice look now sample paints are always flat um, but what we're going to do is we're going to hang this up and let it dry and we're going to cover it with poly, uh, the Minwax polyurethane that we talked about and that'll give it a nice shiny finish. And we can sand it and between coats and get it get a real clear and um, real real clear and shiny looking to simulate the celluloid columns which are on the original clocks. Now here's a piece of our finished column and you can see that it looks pretty good. So now it's ready to cut into segments. Uh, I would I use a jeweler's uh, saw so that uh, you can you can cut it uh, with anything. You can cut it on a table saw. Just remember you have an eighth inch for the blade or how, whatever the thickness of your blade is. And there you go. Um, now you can use uh, different. Sometimes these things were white and green, uh, uh, kind of a pea green and a green, or a black and red with some brown in it. And then you need a third color. Just uh, it's a real easy way to make a, a good looking good looking replacement uh, for a column. Now if you're actually going to replace just one then you want to make sure you've got a terrific match. Uh, it's easier actually to replace them than sets. And there you go, all ready to cut and put on your clock.